Hello there, all you beautiful thrill seekers. My name is Coach Shadonksterborn, but built for theme parks. This is the video you have been waiting for. Now, this is being pre recorded on Christmas Eve, and I've decided to release it as my Christmas present to you guys on Christmas Day. So, this has been released on Christmas Day, so stay tuned all throughout. Uh, the day I'm recording this, Christmas Eve, because we've still got um, a couple of videos that we've uploaded yesterday on Christmas Eve. So go and check out those two Disney videos where we checked out news on a new show at Disneyland Paris and also a brand new um, sort of changes to the Snow White attraction at Disneyland in Anaheim. So stay, so go and watch those two videos from yesterday on Christmas Eve. Um, but this video, this is your Christmas Day present from me. And um, this didn't come from Father Christmas, this came from me. And... This is the big one. This is the 2K sub Q&A video. Now, when we hit 2,000 subscribers, I encouraged all of you guys on YouTube and on Instagram to get your questions into the show for the video today. And my giddy auntie, we've got a lot of questions to get through today. Um, now, before we do, a bit of an announcement. Um, I will probably record a new video on Christmas Eve, the yesterday. Uh, as well as the two Disney videos, and I'll probably do like an update version of this. But, basically, I have been nominated for two ATR awards. Now, if you don't know what they are, basically, Alton Towers Updates on Instagram, massive shout out to them, they're a brilliant page, um, announced that um, the next version, or the next series, should we say, or the next in the series of the ATR awards. And, basically, I have been nominated for two awards. I've been nominated for... Uh, favorite enthusiast to post good content throughout, which is a long title for an award, but I love it. And also the big one, the big award in my opinion, which is favorite theme park enthusiast. So massive shout out to everyone that voted in the first stage. However, the second stage of nominations is already open and it closes on January the 7th, 2021. So please, please, please make this a good start to 2021 for Coast Shell YouTube channel. I'll put it in the community page and I'll be putting it in the description down below all the videos, including this one, until the deadline is up. So please, 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 Get your votes in now in the forms link in the description down below. It's multiple choice, a choice of three on each category. And you look for uh, favorite enthusiasts to post good content throughout and also favorite theme park enthusiasts. So go and look for those two categories. I'll be one of the options. Click on the option, submit your voting uh, forms, and it will go through. So you have to tick one box and one box only. Uh, now, this is the big one, the 2K sub Q&A video. So when we hit 2K, I ask you guys to send you questions on YouTube and I also sent them in uh, on Christmas Eve on Instagram, on the story. And my my word, we've got a lot of questions to get through. Uh, so before we get started, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss another theme park YouTube video. Make sure you are uh, subscribed to the channel. Uh, make sure you also comment down below your thoughts and opinions on all the questions. If you had any questions, shout it out by YouTube or Instagram comment down below to say hello my question got answered um make sure you also go into the description down below to vote for me for the atr awards let's get those two awards nailed down guys uh, and also make sure you go down to the description to subscribe to tiktok twitter instagram and snapchat it's all there all the links are there and uh, for now let's get into this q a video so let's start off with question number one and I've got the, uh, oh, <laughs> spilled some money there. Uh, this is all one take, so it's, uh, we'll leave that in there. <laughs> and um, I like doing one take videos because they, um, they're always good fun and anything can happen. Um, so first question from Theme Park Viper on YouTube. Uh, how's life? You know what? Life is great. Life is wonderful. Um, I get to do this for you guys. I get to um, influence as a job and it's brilliant so life is great um <laughs> still single which is the negative part but everything else all good <laughs> um question two uh from ryan gibson on youtube uh what's your favorite jason statham movie um i'm a big fan of the fast and furious stuff that he did uh homefront the meg two brilliant films by the way um i'm not the biggest super fan of jason statham but his films are always really good so uh, you know, it's it's all good. It's all good. Uh, so thank you very much for your question, Ryan. Um, top three most anticipated coasters. This came from um, Matt J. Barrick on Instagram. So massive shout out to Matt. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go with Condor at Welby, Belgium. Time Traveller at 
uh, Pop Sign Pan and Iron Guazi at Bush Gardens Tampa. I think that all three are good in their own way. Condor at Walbur, Belgium. One of the most underrated coasters next year. One of the most underrated thrill coasters next year. Uh, really good ride. Walbur, Belgium has done an incredible job teasing this, promoting this. Uh, and by the way, somebody commented on that video that I released the trailer just a couple of days ago and said, uh, why is the, the, the Dutch version, on, why is the French version on there, not the Dutch version? I was like, well, I didn't even know there was a Dutch version. I just took the, the trailer video that was on the forum that was from Mulberry Bottom's YouTube channel and just used it. So I didn't even know there was a Dutch version. If there was an English version, I would have waited. But there you go. Um, but yeah, Condar's looking fantastic. It's testing. The, t the trailer's out. The name's out. It looks amazing. It's brilliant. Um, Time Traveller, which is the code name for Pop Sander Pan's Mac Extreme Spinning Coaster, that looks amazing as well. Um, the construction's really picked up the pace with that. That's about halfway done nearly. So, you know, really good ride there. And Iron Guazi, that's been testing. That's ready to open as soon as the park's open, back open in America next year in 2021. Um, and Iron Guazi just looks amazing. It, it looks amazing. They've done a really good job, and it's been a long time coming converting um, Guazi into an RMC. So, you know, that's been a long time coming, that attraction. So, uh, thank you very much to Matt for your question, and that is my answer. Um, next question from Nathan Graveson on YouTube. Shout out to Nathan. Uh, if you could work for Intamin, where and what would you build? Um, I would build a Blitz coaster at Thorpe Park on the Swarm, uh, the island behind Swarm. Uh, I would build one of those, you know, Objective Mars at Futura Scope. We did a lot of updates on that on this channel. Uh, a spinning dart ride coaster, indoor and outdoor elements. I would put that at Energylandia. You look at the theming in the queue line for Hyperion. They could do some good stuff with that. And also a clone of Lek coaster at uh, Leolandia at Drayton Manor. I would do that personally. Uh, so thank you very much for your question, Nathan. Um, Stanford Bridge on YouTube says, have you ever used the expression, a hey, up? Uh, always, always 100% I've used that, you know, nearly all the time. I've always said, a hey, up. Um, it's a proper Yorkshire expression. It's hilarious. But, and some people are, some people outside of Yorkshire will probably look at me going, hey, what's this? What's he saying? Um, you know, so, some some poor geezer in Australia is probably working to put on subtitles right now and say, right, what is he saying? What does I have mean? Um, but yeah, it's a proper Yorkshire expression. Um, it's a really good expression. And, um, you know, it's, it's quite comical in a way. So, yeah, I have used it before. It's, uh, just, a, it's just a Yorkshire thing. As South Park says it's a Jersey thing, it's a Yorkshire thing. Uh, so massive shout out to Stanford Bridge for that comical question. I love that. Um... Let's go then to British Big M on YouTube. Massive shout out to you. Uh, what coaster in the UK would you remove, re-theme, or relocate? Right, this has been a good one. I've used all three. It's, he said remove, re-theme, or relocate, but I decided to go with all three. So, I've decided to re-theme Stealth into a Lunar Research Testing Facility theme. Uh, keep the name, repaint it, give it a new theme, maybe even give it an indoor queue line station. Rejig the whole area, safe as sound. I would relocate Rita down here. I've, I've put it down, Rita from Alton Towers to Drayton Manor because I think the Drayton Manor needs it more than Alton Towers at the minute. And I would remove Hero at Flamingo Land and scrap it if that's a, a bonus option to scrap it. So massive shout out to British Big M for your question. Next up, um, it's MK Wolf on Instagram. Uh, it says, what is your favourite theme park? My favourite theme park is Alton Towers because of the magical aspects of it. But loads, every single park I've been to in the UK, like Thorpe Park, Drake Manor, Lightwater Valley, Flamingo Land, you know, all these parks in the UK and Disneyland Paris in, in France as well. All the parks I've been to have been great in their own way. They're my fav all the parks are my favourites in their own way. I think overall my favourite is Alton Towers, but all of them are my favourite in their own way. So, uh, and the parks list will grow. Over the next few years, the parks list will grow. There's loads of parks in Europe that I want to visit. Um, Energylandia, Parc du Bacasse, who likes my Instagram posts. Holiday Park in Germany, who's commented on this channel before. I forgot to mention it in a video, I don't think. Um... On one of the holiday park updates in the recent weeks, they've actually commented 
on that video. It was amazing to get that comment from Hold Depart themselves. So massive shout out to them if they're watching this. It's brilliant. Um, but yeah, I'd say Alton Towers is my favourite overall, but all of them are unique in their own way and they're brilliant. And, I f and the all of them are my favourites in their own way. Uh, but thank you very much for your question. It's mk.wolf. And we'll have more questions from him because we have multiple questions. Um, next up, uh, on Instagram, Southerns77. Massive shout out to you. Uh, what are your thoughts on the clamshell restraints on the hypers and gigas? So, basically, if you don't know what he's talking about, you got these like semi-circular crescent type, big boldy restraints, lap bar types on hypers and gigas that you pull down. Well, they get pulled down. It's like uh, it's like one of those big cushiony restraints that you find on air, like with the over like the over the shoulder ones with the big cushiony restraints. It's like that, but sort of a lap bar version. That's what he means. And to be honest, I've not really experienced that type of lap bar before. But from the from the reviews it's been getting, it's all right. It gives you a lot of airtime. As long as it's not put on too tightly, but it's still locked on so you're safe. And you get more freedom to be loose around. Um, it sounds pretty all right. So hopefully I do get to do some of these hypers and gigas with the clamshell restraints. Obviously, you know, Shambhala at Port Aventura. Silver Star at Europa Park, uh, Ryan at Kings Island is a Giga example, Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. Um, loads of these different coasters. I'd love to experience each and every one of them and sort of get an idea of how the clamshell restraint feels. So massive shout out to Southern77 for that question, because uh, that was a really good one. Um, next up, um, let's go to Nate Baum Scholl, who says, if you were to create a roller coaster manufacturing company, what would it be called and what type of coasters would you make? So I thought long and hard about this. I've come up with three types of roller coasters and a name for the company. So I would come up with Thrill, Ri uh, Thrill Rails, sorry, not Thrill Rides, Thrill Rails. And the three types of coasters I would make is a modern standing coaster, uh, my own version of the Wing Rider and a launch coaster. Now this could be different types, it could be an inverted powered launch coaster, it could be an inverted launch coaster for the thrill seekers, it could be a normal sit down launch coaster, it could be a stand up launch coaster. There's many different variations of these types of products, but um, that's what kind of co uh, products I would make and that's what the company would be called, Thrill Rails. So massive shout out to Nate for suggesting that comment. Because uh, it was a really good one actually, it made me think a lot. Um, next up, Para Skeep on YouTube says, if you could work for B&M, what model would you create? I would create the Bulgram Mabillard Suspended Wing Rider. So if you're wondering what that means, basically, imagine the wing coaster, the Swarm at Thought Park, Raptor at Gala Land, um, Gatekeeper at Cedar Point, X-Flight at Six Flags Great America. Imagine the wing coaster, but instead of the seats being on top of the track, where you've got nothing under, nothing below you, nothing above you, and you're at the side, sort of giving you the near miss element. Imagine the wing coaster train was put from on top of the track and moved into an inverted style. So you're sort of si sitting in like a, a winged bat formation underneath the track, which is interesting. It's like, it's like a cross between inverted and wing rider. So, you know, that's what I do personally. But thank you very much for your comment. Much appreciated. Next question is from Adventure Aaron. So massive shout out to you on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, your favorite flat ride. Um, you know what? One flat ride that I think is very unique and is one of my favorites, one of my all-time favorites that's currently operating still is Rush at Thought Park, the screaming swing that opened back in 05. That is a wonderful experience. It's a wonderful thrill ride. And, you know, it's just the, the exhilaration and the feel as you're sort of getting the the negative G's as you're being flung into the air on this massive, colossus swing. Um, so, yeah, go with Rush, to be honest. So, thank you very much for your question, Adventure Aaron. Much appreciated. Uh, you got the same name as me. Brilliant. Um, Falco Flair on YouTube says, Will you be at Pantheon opening at Bush Gardens, Williamsburg? Um... I won't, unfortunately. Uh, it's in America, so unfortunately I won't be traveling over there for the opening of Pantheon next year. But I will hopefully be at Busch Gardens Williamsburg in the future to ride Pantheon. I won't be at the opening, but I'd love to go there to ride Pantheon at some point. Uh, because it is an amazing looking coaster. So I would go over there in the future, but I won't be there at the opening, unfortunately. But thank you very much for your question. Much appreciated. Um, next up, John Rosie on YouTube. 
uh, says, do you think that you will ever hit 100 million subscribers? I flaming well hope so. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope I hit that. Um, it would be lovely. It would be absolutely lovely. I mean, you know, I get comments and I get, you know, messages from people, from, from huge fans of the channel. Um, you know, thinking that I am the now favourite, you know, Think Park YouTuber, or one of the new favourites of Think Park YouTube, and sort of one of the next generation of stars, should we say? Um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not really one for gushing praise. I just go in, I do my job, and I do it to the best of my ability. I'm one of those people that just does it, and I'm not really one for gushing praise. Um, so when I get sort of messages from people saying, oh, you're my, you're my favourite YouTuber, you know, you should be on, like, you know, 1 million subs or 100 million, you know, things like that. And, you know, it, it, it does fill me with pride. It really, really does. And um, if, you hit, if, if I hit 100 million, that would be amazing. Because, um, you know, let's be honest, Theme Park Worldwide were, were you know, they were the favourite, you know, a few years ago. They, they, you know, over the last few years, they were the favourites. And obviously since, you know what, um... You know, it's been a whirlwind, you know, to, to think that some people now think I am the favourite. So, you know, I don't really want to pick out a favourite because there's other fantastic YouTube channels out there. You know, Theme Park Magic, uh, Theme Park Jake, Jack Silkstone is a good friend of mine now. Um, Arch Nemesis is making the music. Obviously, you saw my diss track reaction video, which has gone down a storm since I uploaded it. Um... Kieran Inc, Kieran Adams on the camera for Jack Silkstone and sort of on the camera for the music videos as well. You know, all these people are doing such good stuff. Pleasure Beach Experience, again, great people. Met them at Howl's Scream uh, last year in 2019. Brilliant people. Tom and Stace, Coast of Crazy, all brilliant. And, you know, there's no real favourite. You know, everyone's a favourite of mine and everyone's a favourite of everyone. And... You know, to get that kind of praise is brilliant. And, you know, to hit 100 million, it would be lovely. Please get get us to 100 million in the long term. It would be brilliant. <laughs> um, you know, imagine being the next Coaster Force, getting up to a million subs. That would be amazing. Um, so thank you very much for your question, John. Much appreciated. And uh, I'm glad that you think I could hit 100 million, potentially. Um, next up, uh, Stanford Bridge again on YouTube. Do you have an ambition to experience every British amusement park? 100%, 100% because I I reckon that every British amusement park has got something different. Even the ones I haven't experienced yet, Fancy Island, Clacton Pier, um, Oakwood, Poulton's Park, every single one of them has got something different about them. So it's those kind of things that attract me to the parks and it'd be great to experience all of them at some point you know there's a few there's quite a few yet that i haven't experienced at all however i do want to experience every single one of them 100 percent uh so thank you very much for your question stanford bridge next question comes from thomas rosie fan 2 on youtube uh what exactly does fan dabby dorsey mean now fan dabby dorsey means just fantastic. It's just a Yorkshire way of saying fantastic. Uh, but Fan Dabby Dose has become one of the catchphrases on this channel. You know, it's been, it's become one of the big catchphrases. You know, Donks to Born but Built for Theme Parks. That's one of the catchphrases. Fan Dabby Dozy, that's one of the catchphrases. Um, so many catchphrases on this channel, it's unbelievable. So, you know, that's become one of the big phrases that sort of resonates with this channel. So, you know, massive shout out to Thomas Rosie Van 2 for that question. And yeah, it's just, it just, it's just a Yorks way of saying fantastic. Uh, but it's become one of the big catchphrases on the channel. So I saw it, it sort of stuck with me. Whenever I put a picture on screen, like on your screen now, Fan Dabby Dozy, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for your question. Uh, let's go into diet pepsi fan 1000 vortex on youtube's question uh what restraints do they have on hypers and gigas thank you very much for your question uh clamshell restraints lap bars over the shoulder restraints t-bars anything you could think of they got it uh so thank you very much for your question that was a quick one uh do you have a role model when it comes to youtube from lydia alti on instagram thank you very much lydia for your question um the sidemen they are the inspiration. They are the benchmark for YouTube for me. You know, they've just hit 10 million over the last month. Massive shout out to them for hitting 10 million. It's brilliant. Um, they're kind of what I want to accomplish. You know, 10 million sort of the goal I want to achieve uh, before I'm dead, basically. Um, and, you know, 10 million's a, a big score. I'm not going to lie, it's a big score. 
And, you know, I've said this before in the past, Theme Park YouTubing is not really one of the big mainstream stalemates of YouTube. You know, gaming, challenges, those are the kind of things that people watch. I want Theme Park YouTubing to be a just as big a part of YouTube as gaming and challenges. So I sort of set myself a long-term benchmark of what the Cybermen have accomplished with the 10 million and go from there, really. Uh, that's sort of what I do. And, um, you know, it'd be great to hit 10 million in the future, in the long-term future. It'd be great to hit 10 million um, for, for doing Theme Park YouTube. And, you know, overall, that would be my benchmark. That would be my benchmark. And Cybermen are sort of the inspiration for that. You see their personalities come out when they do their challenges in gaming. I sort of let my personality come out when I'm doing theme park news, reviews, vlogs, etc. Uh, and hopefully we'll be doing a whole lot more vlogs next year. Now, you guys haven't seen this. Hang on, well, I've got a moment. You guys haven't seen this. I think this is the right one. Yeah. What do you think that is? It's, uh, I don't think I should show it because of copyright. I don't know if l &ER will get me done or not. But... This is a train journey. It's not valid for travel, so it's not an actual train ticket. However, this is just a journey uh, look. And basically, it's the journey from Doncaster to Blackpool North, which means I've got my journey planned for Blackpool on February 6th. So you guys are going to see me there. And if I can get the right one from here as well... Hang on, I've got two. <laughs> this is the problem with doing one take. It sort of takes ages. Um... Uh, this one's got the earliest time. I've got another one here, and this one is Donny to you, Toxita. And the reason why I've got this is for the 20th of March for Alton Towers opening day. So, uh, two train journeys, four tickets, one for the shortest uh, journey uh, with the less changes, and one for the earliest train. Um, so, yeah, and to be fair with the Alton Towers one, there is actually two journeys. I'm not too sure what the earliest train is for one of the journeys, but they have got me... Uh, two of these for each of the two trips Blackpool, Poison Beach and Alton Towers and uh, The Doncaster to Sheffield, Sheffield to Derby, Derby to Toxeter is the longest journey But it's the one with the the first train and then this one Doncaster to Derby, Doncaster to you uh, Derby to you Toxeter from, from Doncaster This one's the shortest with the last changes. So I'll have to try and get the earliest train for that one, but um, it shows that I've got some trips planned for next year if all goes ahead and it's part of my education because it's part of my portfolio now as well So, you know, it's going to be, you know, educational travel, which is essential So no matter what the tier systems, it's part of my essential travel, which means I can go and um, Hopefully I'll see some of you guys there on February 6th and hopefully on 20th of March as well um, But thank you very much for your question uh, for the role model Lydia. I uh, went a bit off track there with the tickets <laughs> Um, I just saw them. I was like, you know what? I will just show them. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much for your question. Uh, next up, Borg Nilsson. I think that's how it's pronounced. Borg Nilsson. I think that's how it's pronounced on YouTube. Um, I think he's from Denmark. So massive shout out to you, Denmark, if you're watching this. Hello, Denmark. Um, apparently, we've got a lot of fans in Denmark. So massive shout out to every single person in Denmark. Um, he says, if you can choose one coaster from around the world, which one would it be? Now, I've decided to think long and hard about this, and I've gone for one coaster from each of the regions. So, from Africa, I've chosen Serpent, which is a Gerslai Eurofighter at Sindibad in Morocco. In uh, Asia, I've gone with the B&M Wing Coaster Falcon from Wuhi Sunak Land in China. Uh, from Australia and New Zealand, I've gone with DC Rivals Hypercoaster at Warner Brothers Movie World in Australia. Um, in Australia. Um, good eye, mate. Australia accents not too bad. Um, <laughs> Baron1898, or Atanatanakenen, which is a long name for it, uh, at Etteling in the Netherlands for Europe. Uh, for the UK, it's Wicker Manor Alton Towers uh, in Staffordshire. Uh, Twister Colossus, Six, Six Flags Magic Mountain in California for the USA, for the North America. And for South America, I've gone with Crater, which is a Gersai Eurofighter at Park Del Cafe in Colombia. So that's one coaster from every region. I've thought long and hard about that question. So massive shout out to you, Bor Nilsson. And massive shout out to every single person in Denmark. Uh, next up, um, Paris Skeep on YouTube once again. Uh, how does it feel to be on a reality show? Now, I haven't been on a reality show yet. I've said on this channel numerous times, Strictly, Dancing on Ice, I'm a Celebrity, Don't Rock the Bow, uh, the real games that's been announced for next year on ITV. All shows I would want to have a go at. You know, you see YouTubers like Joe Sugg, who does challenges, pranks, vlogs. You know, he's done Strictly. Saffron Barker, beauty, fashion, vlogs, does Strictly. 
um, Jack Maynard, pranks, vlogs, singing, etc. Did I'm a Celebrity for a bit. And, you know, there's never been a... Th Obviously, you know, I've spoken in the past on the video. I'm a Celebrity had a wine critic on there at one point. What's to say there can't be a theme park critic or a theme park enthusiast personality, social media personality, a theme park enthusiast on a reality show? It's not out of the question. And I've said numerous times, I'll do any show that they throw at me. I can't speak about it publicly. If I, if I, if I was doing a show, I couldn't speak about it publicly until it was announced by them. So, you yeah, know, that's usually the rule with these kind of things. So if I was doing something, I wouldn't say it because that would be breaking contract. And, you know, I'm not doing anything at the minute. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm in the clear so far. I'm not doing anything. Um, I'm not doing anything next year to my knowledge so far. And, you know, it, it'd be great to do a reality show. It'd be interesting because you sort of have that feel like, oh no, you know, are they going to call, are they going to, I thought that was a hoover then, are they going to catch me out? You know, is, is, is something going to happen on a reality show that's going to make me feel like, oh no, it's going to happen. Um, in my personal opinion, I think a reality show would be great because it sort of gives me a chance to sort of be myself on a mainstream audience and... You know, it sort of gives me an opportunity to be myself and meet new people and, you know, step out of my comfort zone a bit. So, in terms of what it feels like to be on a reality show, I'm not too sure what it feels like yet, but I'm sure it would feel different, unique, but also joyful because you're trying something you've never done before, you're meeting new people, you're getting new experiences, and you're also becoming a better person, in my opinion. So, that's what I would do. Uh, so, massive shout out to Paraskeep for that question. Let's move on. If you were to go to an Australian theme park, which part would you go to? From itsmk.wolf on Instagram. Um, I would go to either Warner Brothers Movie World, Dream World, or Luna Park Sydney. That's what my choice would be. So massive shout out to you for that question. Uh, where do you think the first RMC will go in the UK? Says Asterix on YouTube. Flamingo Land or Blackpool Pleasure Beach? I think Flamingo Land's got some interesting sites available. I think if you're a move hero and the Rocking Tug Vortex, you've got a decent site there. Um, that's sort of near the Ten Looper as well. Um, and, you know, there's a couple of other sites around the park as well. I mean, if you take out the, the training camp and the, the little splash battle and the flip-flop, you've got a nice area around there for a custom raptor. Um, at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, you've got the infusion site. You can put it over water. Um, you've got different other sites as well. So Blackpool, Pleasure Beach, or Flamingo will be the choice for me for a Raptor. Uh, so massive shout out to Asterix for that question. Next up, Liam on YouTube. Don't worry, we've only got, we've got three more to go. Three more questions. Um, next up, Liam on YouTube who says, what's it like to be a YouTuber? That's, that's a general question. What's it like to be a YouTuber? I'll give it three words and I've wrote down three words. Amazing, nerve wracking, and joyful. It's amazing because you get to inspire other people to do their own thing, be get let people be inspired by your positivity, personality, and creativity. Um, nerve wracking because it, it, it's just like being on TV on a. It's like that thing being on a being on a reality show. You're putting yourself out there for the public eye, and the more famous you get, and the more recognised you get, the more you get on the public eye, and the more press start to intervene and start getting into your life. Um, and I've had press stuff before. I've had the stuff with BBC Radio Sheffield. I've had the free press. I've had different things in the past. And, you know, those are all amazing experiences. And that's probably going to continue. The channel's growing so much now. Like, I can't even keep up with it sometimes. And, you know, it's going to come to a stage where the, the, the more press are going to start intervening. And more press are going to start looking ahead. And, you know... It's nerve-wracking on that retrospect, but then again, going back to that first word, amazing, it's amazing to inspire people, but it's also joyful because you sort of feel a sense of pride that you've sort of done your job as an influencer if you're inspiring people to be positive in the in the world, should we say, because that's our job, really. Um, so those are the three words I'd probably describe it as. Amazing, because you're inspiring people. Uh, nerve-wracking, because you're in the public eye, but joyful, because it's worth it. And if you do it right and you do the right things, it's worth it. So that's what I, that's what it's like being a YouTuber. Thank you very much for your question, Liam. Much appreciated. Uh, penultimate question of today is from if is from Gaming King OMG on YouTube. Um, if you could buy a theme park and change it, what, what what theme park would you buy and what would you change? 
I would change. I would buy Thorpe Park, Thorpe Park Resort near Kent in London, and I would change it back into a fully fledged thrill park. I'd bring in loads of brand new coasters, loads of brand new attractions, set it for the thrill market. I'd have some family attractions, but I would have it mostly for the thrill seekers. Because if you think about it, Chessington's a family park, Legoland's a family park, and they're not too far away from Thorpe. So I would have Chessington the family direction, Legoland the family direction, Thorpe the thrill direction. And I'd bring in loads of new rides, I'd refurbish old attractions, and I'd keep it updated every now and then. So I, would, I wouldn't bring back the, the cartoon branding from 2010. I mean, I am planning to do like a big discussion video talking about, you know, what would I do with the, uh, with the Thought Park in 20, you know, what would I do with Thought Park from 2010 onwards? Sort of going back in time and sort of what would I do from 2010 onwards? Um, so stay tuned for that video at some point, hopefully before the end of the year. But I would um, change it back into a thrill park and I'd operate it as a thrill park and bring in loads of new rides and attractions for the thrill seekers. So that's probably what I'd do. Uh, so thank you very much for your question, Gaming King OMG on YouTube. Final question of the 2000 subscriber Q&A comes from uh, it's mk.wolf again on Instagram. Ever had a bad experience at a theme park? So that was the final question, and no, I haven't yet. They've all been really positive. There's been little moments here and there, like, you know, if a queue's longer than it's advertised, I do get pretty angry about that, because, of course, you know, you can't lie, even though it's not completely accurate. Um, there's been experiences where, you know, there might have been a little bit of ketchup on my shoulder if I've eaten a hot dog at Eastern Express or Alton Towers or something, and you sort of have to wipe it off. You sort of think, oh, no, I haven't got any wet wipes to clean it off. Um... But apart from that, not really, not really a bad experience as a whole. Um, but thank you very much for your question, it's mk.wolf. There we go, so that's it, that is the 2000 subscriber Q&A video. We've gone through everything in this video, we've gone from hoovers, to um, thinking questions, to straight up answers, to answers that got me quite emotional at times, I'm not going to lie, because when I was sort of thinking about this, you know, even the questions about... You know, who's your role model? What would it be like to hit 100 million subs? You know, um, what's it like to be a YouTuber? Those kind of questions actually make tugged at my heartstrings because it's sort of... what you, There's no perfect answer for those kind of questions. You sort of answer it the best you can, but there's no perfect answer because every YouTuber's experience is different. And, you know, I'm going to keep doing this. There's no reason why I should stop. So, basically, you're probably wondering now what's going to happen. Well... It's going to continue, so every time we hit, um, uh, now we've hit the first 2,000 subs, it's now going to go up, not every 500 subs, it's going to go up every 1,000. So the next Q&A video will be when we hit 3,000 subscribers, not 2,500. When we hit 3,000 subs, that's the next Q&A video, so stay tuned over next year, hopefully, if we hit 3,000 next year, I'd love to, I think the goal next year is to hit 10,000 subscribers. That's the main goal for next year, to hit 10,000 subs by the end of the next year. So please, please, please get in the subscription box, get subscribed, because we're delivering a whole bunch of new content next year. New theme park news and updates, brand new vlogs, brand new reviews, brand new discussion videos, brand new prediction videos. It's all going down next year. So please, please, please get on there and get subscribing because we want to hit 10k by the end of next year. But for now, guys, thank you so, so much for watching this Theme Park Q&A subscriber video. Uh, like I said, the next one will be when we hit 3,000 subscribers, then 4, then 5, then 6, then 7, then 8, then 9, then 10. And then when we get to 10,000 subscribers, the goal is we're going to do a Q&A video every 5,000 subscribers um, up until 100,000 subscribers. So when we hit 10k, the next subscriber video will be 15,000 subs, then 20,000, then 25,000, and so forth. Um, but there we go. So please go and watch the two Disney videos from Christmas Eve yesterday. Make sure you stay tuned for more videos heading into the new year. And for now, guys, my name is Coast Shell. Keep living the coast life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a sub-tastic day.